Hey there, welcome back to the lab. Remember that one time? You know, that time that we tried to make a 3D printed parts organizer? Yep. We printed a bunch of these, but there are a lot of problems with our first attempt. First of all, these trays are huge, not to mention they take over 20 hours to print. The 3D printed labels are hard to read, like, come on. What numbers are those? Like, really? You can't read that. Nobody can. That's the problem. The parts tray has enough problems on its own, but it also requires a 3D printed rail to mate with a larger rack. Basically, we need nice 45 degree angles and pretty tight tolerances, otherwise the system won't work too well because the racks will just fall through. So that's why even though we spent a lot of time printing these nice trays, They've just been floating around the shop, consuming a bunch of space, laying side by side. So we're about to receive a massive pile of components for our prototype, and these components are going to be used to assemble our prototype UPS, the functional prototype that will allow testing some critical circuits. To help me stay efficient, I think that I want to use parts trays so I don't need to monkey around with all those static safe bags, at least for the resistors and capacitors. And I think that having clearly labeled tubes of components will be a lot more efficient than stacks and stacks of bags. For those who may be new to the channel, first of all, welcome, but I want to tell you that 3D printing isn't our usual thing. We do a bit of tinkering with electronics, NEE for everyone, I share electronics projects through our videos, and generally take you along for the ride. For example, you might recognize these if you've been hanging around for a while. We just used these boxes of parts last weekend and unboxed them inspected some PCBs, it was a pretty good time. Definitely check that out if you didn't catch us on Saturday. I love sharing the good, the bad, the mistakes, the successes, every part of our projects. I love sharing that all with you. If you're interested in learning more about electronics as a hobby, or if you're thinking about pursuing a degree or a career in electrical engineering, maybe hang around with us in the shop for a while, take a look at what designing electronics looks like, walk with us as we take measurements in the lab, and. Well, maybe you'll find a real passion for electronics or electrical engineering. Maybe you'll realize it's not really your thing. Either way, you can save yourself a little bit of time just by hanging out in the shop with us. So, welcome. Anyways, we've identified a need. We need basically the same thing we have now, but better. We want to optimize this parts drain CAD, which should make it work better for our needs. The goals are to reduce the print time, reduce the overall size, allow for clear labeling of each part value, and we'll design a mounting system such that it's easy to identify by inspection which parts exist where. Like, if they're all organized but you can't read the labels, that's not very helpful. Another goal is to make the tray mounting mechanism modular. I see a lot of value in having a lot of small parts racks on the bench. That'll help us stay organized while working. I can use this to store a couple decades worth of resistors and capacitors, using these trays to stay organized and keep quite a lot of parts within arm's reach. I can also see the value in a wall hanging rack with two or three columns worth of trays for organizing all sorts of components, just a ton of components, but getting them all in one place. Right now we're just using regular PLA, but if we use some 3D printed static safe tubes or static safe 3D printable plastics to build the frame, That'll allow us to store ICs, transistors, diodes, and other components as well, not just resistors and capacitors anymore. Now that could be pretty cool. And so I want this rack to be modular and kind of lend itself well to storing all different types of components, different sizes, different shapes. Yeah, I have no idea what I'm gonna to wanna to do with this, but I know that if I need to start with a new rack and go from square one, that'll be kind of inconvenient. So these are the goals. What are the steps? Our first step is CAD. I started thinking about the parts rack first, how we want to group multiple trays together, and then we'll design the tray to accommodate the rack. So we're gonna accommodate the modularity first and then build the rack to go into it. So we wanna use the same basic construction as some of our previous projects. We want to use extruded aluminum lengths in combination with 3D printed brackets, and we're going to use this to construct a larger system. I modeled this cube which acts as a corner for three aluminum angles. This bracket nestles the extrusions exactly two millimeters from one another, and this produces a consistent spacing that leads to a square frame. We designed in, we designed in some holes, and this allows for bolts to be used that will secure this frame if friction can't be trusted. For example, 
when wall hanging a large parts rack, having a bolt or two that prevents the whole rack from sliding apart and scattering thousands of test tubes on the ground? Feels a little more important for our free carry benchtop rack that's only going to carry five racks of parts and sit right next to us. Doesn't seem as important, but at any rate, I put the hooks in place so that we can screw the thing together. All right, uh, this is looking pretty sweet, so let's send this one off to the 3D printer and get started on the rest of the system. The screen capture failed while modeling the actual tray, which is a shame, but let's talk about the rails first and come back to the tray. The rails allow for slotting a 16th of an inch by half inch aluminum bar into any of these slots, which are spaced at exactly one half of the height of the test tubes we'd like to be storing, so skipping every other slot will result in exactly the right spacing to nestle the trays together efficiently. These interface with the geometry of the rack assembled with the aluminum extrusion, and then the, these are the interface between the trays and the larger structure. Small features are added to the top and bottoms of the rails, which we actually ended up removing eventually, which was meant to allow them to be stacked end to end, but in practice, you can just put them next to each other. But this effectively supports creating racks with any height, limited only by the length of the aluminum angle available for purchase in this geometry. I think this whole thing worked out pretty great. I can add brackets that provide intermediate vertical bars mid rail to build this into an incredibly large modular system, if required. I like this. To the rack then. This rack consists of 96 holes with a divider separating them into two sets of 48. Why? Because there are 96 unique component values in every decade for 1% tolerance resistors. That means there are 96 values between 100 and 1000. 96 holes will allow to accept 96 test tubes, which allows for storing every 1% resistor of a specific package size and decade in one tray. That's a lot of parts. The divider is used when storing 5% tolerance parts as well, where two decades can now be stored in one tray. For looser tolerance components like capacitors, it may be possible to store four sets of component values in one rack. For capacitors, that would typically fall into this bucket. I don't know whether I'd rather do one decade and do four different voltage ratings or one decade and four different package sizes, but we'll figure that all out later. The mechanism by which component values are distributed are commonly referred to as E-series. I've linked a great diagram of the different E-series in the description below. Check that out if you're interested in how component values are distributed. You may be wondering why these trays have funky curvy flare on top. Basically, because I can, and I think it looks neat. Better than a straight cylinder, right? So who says electronic component storage trays can't have a bit of flare, all right? So, <laughs> right, oh, right. As long as we're talking about flare, there's a critical point here. There's a critical point that I need to make about these trays. I cut little grooves in them, which will help the tray stay on the aluminum guides and sit nicely in the rack. I cut these V grooves in both directions, which allows for making either deeper, skinny racks or shallow, wider racks. My point is the trays can be stored in either orientation, which I think is pretty neat. A few of these were 3D printed, the aluminum extrusion was cut, and now we're ready to assemble everything. The extrusions fit very snugly in the brackets, but don't explode, which is exactly what we were shooting for. The tubes fit snugly enough in the tray that they don't fall out of flipped upside down, but aren't difficult to remove either. These obviously aren't perfect, but I think they'll serve our needs for quite a while. This is certainly better than having a bunch of large, bulky trays floating around the shop. With the small rack complete, I think I'll try working with this for a little while. I'll try to use this system to support our build and debugging process for the prototype UPS as a trial. If it seems to work well and we don't need to make any radical improvements, then great. I'll print some more parts and expand the system into something bigger. My broader plan is to use color as a hint. I'll either use color to indicate component type, component size, or something. I don't have the whole system dreamed up right now, but I think this is an excellent starting point, and I think this will be very useful. It feels great to have this parts rack finally ready to use. I don't remember exactly when we started this project, but it was way too long ago. If you want to see more 3D printing and have some project ideas that might require it, drop a suggestion in those comments. For me, 3D printers are a fantastic tool, but it's important to use the right tool for any job. For our parts rack, I think the 3D printer did an excellent job and saved us a lot of time. If you like what you saw today, 
Consider subscribing to be notified of our future videos where we will unbox parts for the UPS prototype, load them into the rack, and inspect the PCBs that we received from JLC PCB. If you want to support the channel, consider checking out the products that we featured today through our Amazon affiliate links in the description. It really helps us out a lot. Thanks. I had a lot of fun finishing up one of the projects that's been hanging out on the backlog for way too long. If you like this part storage method, let me know by hitting the like button on this video or leaving a comment letting us know what you enjoyed. Most of all, I hope that you learned something great today, and I hope to see you again soon. So thanks for watching EVE for everyone, and thank you for staying till the end. Bye!